you. I'm Koko, and this is joint work with Naohiko Hoshino and Ichiro Hasso. Today, I, I'd like to introduce a framework, memory-full geometry of interaction, that, that provides a direct translation from com effectful computations to abstract machines. And I begin with geometry of interaction that forms the basis of a framework. Geometry of interaction, GOI, is originally introduced by Girard to give semantics of linear logic proofs. And via the curry howard correspondence, it is applied to give program semantics. Poku machine semantics, studied by Maki, Danos, and Renier, and so on, uh, is an example of GOI-based program semantics. In token machine semantics, a PCF term is translated to an abstract machine called token machine. And a token machine can be depicted as a graph, and here is an example. And you can see a cross connection. Uh, you can see a cross connection in this graph between the two nodes that corresponds to a function and its application. Execution of this token machine can be visualized using a token moving around the graph and updating its data. And the correctness of the translation ensures that if, the, if a token exits the graph, its data, its data coincides with the evaluation result of the original term. And in this way, token machine semantics um, provides translation of PCF terms in the executable way, and exploiting this feature, there have been proposed compilation techniques uh, where token machines are directly implemented in assembly or on hardware. Another feature of token machine semantics is that it has a nice categorical formalization. It, it, would, enable the, uh, it would enable us to reasoning on programs in a mathematical and generic way. And the goal of our work is to extend the, uh, extend the scope of this token machine semantics, namely to accommodate computational effects. And we call that PCF includes recursion. Then as the first step, we developed the framework memory for GOI two years ago. It successfully accommodated, accommodated, accommodates computational effects, but excludes recursion. So the second step, our current work, is to recover accommodation of recursion in the framework. Okay, so I describe uh, the memory for GUI framework now. Uh, target language is precisely the PCF with algebraic effects. Algebraic, uh, then we use algebraic operations as an interface to generate computational effects. Examples include a non-deterministic choice operator, a probabilistic choice operator. Here, M is chosen with probability P, and N is with probability 1 minus P, and actions on global states, like lookup and update. And reduction on these terms is defined in the same way as Plotkin and Power proposed. A framework translates these terms to, um, let's say, effectful and memoryful extension of token machines. We call them transducer. Transducer with input type A and output type B consists of a, in, consists of a state space X, a transition function C, and an initial state X0. Given an given input of type A, the transducer um, makes state tran make a state, tra state transition and generates update uh, output of type B. On this intuition, we depict uh, transducer in this diagrammatic style. And note that a transition function is itself effectful. Here we use a monad T to model various computational effects. For example, if we take the power set monad, the uh, state transition can be non-deterministic. And similarly, if we take the sub-distribution monad, the transition can be probabilistic. And Transitions with global states can be modeled by using this type of monad. Okay, so let's define. Uh, so we'd like to define a translation of these terms to transducers, and the translation is defined by me by means of a co-algebraic component calculus. I mean, we define a set of constructions of transducers, 
and use them to define a translation. So, so I go through the, our component calculus. The core part of our component calculus consists of these four operations, operators. So we can compose two, two transducers in two different ways. The first way is sequential. We connect uh, output of the one transducer to input of the other. And the second way to compose two transducers is in a parallel way. So according to an input type, uh, either one of the two transducers is executed. The third operator, namely trace operator, equips uh, transducer with equips uh, as a self-feedback loop to a transducer. And the last operator makes a count of many copies of a transducer. Then these uh, four core operators on transducers uh, enables us to make a cross connection between two components. And to translate algebraic operations, we, we use the construction of transducers lifted from algebraic operations. For example, if we take a probabilistic choice operator, uh, the resulting construction works as follows. We take two transducers. Here we show two state transition diagrams. And the construction as a fresh in initial state and two probabilistic transitions. So in this, uh, so these lifted algebraic operations enables transducers to track effect occurrences. I mean, uh, a transducer can make effectual transition only if they are in initial state, and after they make effectual, tra effectual transitions, they remember the result using internal states and uh, fix their behavior. Okay, and now we move uh, to translate recursion we define another two operators on transducers. And one is, one we call the general style fixed point operator. It is defined in intention to make infinite chain of cell uh, cross connections that corresponds to an infinitely many times of self application of some function that is often used to uh, interpret recursion in denotational semantics. And another operator is Mackey style fixed point operator. Then here we add two self feedback loops to a component. And one of the main contributions of our current work is to investigate properties of these two operators, namely two characterizations of the Jira style operator and the coincidence of two, these two styles. So let me go through these properties. The first one is the characterization of the Jira style operator as a fixed point with respect to a cross connection. So here we use the behavioral equivalence to uh, equational reasoning, equationally reasoning on transducers. Uh, it, it can, uh, with behavioral equivalence, we can abstract away internal state space of transducers. And the second characterization of the general style operator is as a supremum of its finite approximations. Assume, we assume that uh, transition functions of the same domain and codomain forms an omega CPPO structure, and this structure lifts to an omega CPO structure of transducers. On this omega CPO, trans, uh, omega CPO structure on transducers, the general style operator is characterized as a supremum. Okay, the last property is the coincidence of these two styles of fixed point operators. As I told, the general style operator uh, has a nice a uh, nice property, namely a characterization of a fixed point and as a supremum. And on the other hand, the monkey style fixed point operator gives a um, relatively simpler way of translate recursion. So this coincidence results, um, so due to this coincidence result, we can enjoy both benefit. So, okay, then with all these constructions on transducers in hand, we now define a translation of terms to transducers. So for uh, uh, the definition is on inductively on type derivation, and for a term with, for a type judgment, we assign a transducer of this form. So we have, uh, so let me see. So if, the, if we have m free variables, 
Then the resulting transducers have M plus one input ports and M plus one output ports. And the leftmost ones are uh, for, uh, okay. Then, then the right, right, or N, NYS corresponds to the free variables. Then precise definition is like this. And here we see, we can see dashed box that represents a countably many copies of our transducer. And we can see a cross connection of two components in uh, translation of application. And variables, algebraic operations, arithmetic primitives, and finally we translate recursion using the Mackey style fixed point operator. And our, uh, our contribution here is to prove adequacy of this translation. This is the precise statement, and intuitively it states that output of the transducer coincides with the evaluation result of the term. Okay, so this is all of our framework, and then I'll show you an example of how this, this framework works. So let's take a term with recursion and probabilistic choice operation. So intuitively this term flips an unfair coin repeatedly until we observe head and returns how many times we observed tails uh, so far. So therefore, uh, the result, uh, evaluation result of this term can be, this can be given by a distribution of a natural numbers shown here. And what the adequacy result says that if we translate this term, the resulting transducer output of the resulting transducer can be given by the same distribution of a natural numbers. Then I'll show you on how, how execution of this transducer looks like. So this is the very simplified and informal depiction of the resulting transducer. You can see two nodes that corresponds to the recursive function flip loop and one is the value zero and a cross connection between them that corresponds to a function application and one feedback loop that corresponds to a recursion. Okay, so let's execute this. A token enters with um, two, two data. One is an empty stack and one is a dummy value. And this left component flips coin and assume that we observe tail. So then this component memorizes the result using its internal state, and then push the stack and token loops. Then again, the component flips coin and observe tails again, push stack and token loops. And assume that uh, at, oh, in the third time, we observe head. Then now uh, push the stack and token visits the right component zero and this value is updated to zero. Then at this point, the stack uh, memorizes how many times we flipped a coin. And using this data, we calculate uh, the result value, namely the how many times we observed tails. Then in this calculation, a token loops twice, yes. And finally, exists a graph with an empty stack and a value two. And this overall execution pass uh, occurs with probability 0.4 times 0.6 times 0.6. Okay, so that's the, the I, I should say again that this is very simplified and informal way of depiction and description of execution. And you can see the precise Transduce and execution on your web browser. So if you are interested, all you have to do is to visit this page, input, uh, enter a term, and click the start button. Then that tool automatically translates that term and shows you execution of the transducer, like this. So that's the end of my talk. In summary, we uh, developed the framework that Gives, a, uh, gives an adequate translation of effectful computations to transducers, and we use a core algebra component calculus in it. Thank you.
Um, <laughs> good question. <laughs> and one direction is uh, one problem we face is a cost problem. That means if we execute the resulting transducer, we observe unnecessarily many, uh, much, too much cost. So one direction is to reduce the cost of execution in this framework. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you.